Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're gonna be looking at something cool. Let me just show you straight away. So you may notice, now when hitting the enemy, you get a nice particle effect here. Even when I get hit, you can see some sparks flying from my side. And of course, the enemy can still damage each other. So you can see them hitting each other here. Alright, so let's look at how that's done. So first let's start by looking at the actual weapons here. If we go into the tools prefabs, you can see a couple of changes here. First, we now have a damage effects origin. This is where the particles are coming from. You can see it's pointing into the axe here. And then in the axe object itself, we have an addition here to the damager script. We have an undo damage event that is calling the damager effects script for the play damage effects method. And this damager effects script has a couple of reference here. One reference is to the actual particle system that we're going to be using. And the other is to the particle origin here that we're using. And the reason why the particle system is actually not living here in the prefab is that we want the particle system to move to the hit point, but then not be parented to the axe itself. So that as the object keeps moving here, as the axe keeps moving, we don't affect the particle origin. To find out the particle origin, we have to go into the player prefab here, where we have the damage effects prefab. And this is the actual particle system. Here it doesn't look like much, but it will later be moved to whichever contact point we make when hitting the enemy, for example. And then at that point, we'll be playing the particle system. But you can see here for all the tools here that we have, now we have a reference to the to the damage effects prefab here that has a particle system. So every single one of these tools has the damage effects script and they'll have references to the damage effects particle system. And we're not gonna go through the whole particle system there. There are a few parameters that you need to modify, but you can probably find your own particle effect that you want and you can also get this from an asset store. There are also other good tutorials out there that do a better job at describing this particle effect. But just as a hint, I'm gonna go over a few quick things. One is we want the duration to be super short because we just want a sputter of particles here. We have a lifetime of between 0.5 and 1.5 seconds. We have a very tiny start size and we're simulating in world space. We also have a gravity modifier of 0.5 to make sure that the particles bend over and get pulled by gravity. Then the emission, we're using a rate of 100, which seems to be fine, but you can modify it to your taste. Also for the shape, you can do a cone or like here, you can do a hemisphere. Just make sure that it's targeted. The radius should be super small so that it looks more like a point emission instead of an area emission. Then we have modified here a little bit the velocity over a lifetime just to shape the particles better. Similarly, for limiting the velocity over a lifetime, we have speed three and dampen one. Both of those meant to make sure that the particles start fast, but then quickly drop, as you can see here. Finally, we have enabled collision. We have enabled world type collision instead of planes collision because we want to have the particles collide with everything. This can be expensive, so tweak to your liking. And we also set the collision quality to low so that it's only hitting static colliders. And we're limiting the, the layers that we're colliding here to make sure we're only colliding with the layers that we care about, which these are for the way that we have things set up. The default grabbable and buildable layers are the only ones that have physical objects. We could have the player here as well but that introduces a number of other issues similarly for the enemy so we're only actually colliding with physical things in the space not the enemies or the player the main thing that we're using here for the effect is the trails effect here we have a very short lifetime from 0.02 to 0.075 and we're also reducing here the minimum vertex distance to 0.05 this allows the particles to look like they're bending you can see here that they're not always straight they bend and that is by this minimum vertex distance. We're using a width over trail curve here to make sure that the edge of the particles tapers off. As you can see, it starts thick and then becomes thinner and thinner, almost to the to a point. And nothing much interesting in the render itself, just choosing some materials here for getting the look that we want, but that's it. Also, tweak your particle system to your liking. This is just one example. But once you have the particle system enabled, then you can attach it to all the all the tools here. And here we can get away with a single particle 
system because we're not going to be triggering it all the time. We don't want to, just for performance reasons. And we can share that one particle system with all the tools. Similarly, for the X wielder, we also have on the X prefab, we have a damage effects origin here that we're using to make sure that the particles come out of the X. And we also have the damage effects particle system, the same prefab that we were using before. And like we have for the player, we also have the damager effects script here on the damager itself to make sure that this is getting called properly. So that's it for the editor. Let's just look into the code and see how this is scripted. First, we had to add the on damage event to the damager here. This was added so we could capture the damage event. So here, when we are doing the damage through the damager, we're also invoking the on do damage event. And this is what's going to trigger the particle system. And here in the damager effects script, we have, as you saw, two references. One is to the actual particle system that we're going to trigger. And the other is the transform where we're going to be sending the particles from. And we're using a quick Boolean helper here to make sure that we don't have any errors in case that we don't have an active particle system. So here in awake, we're just checking if we have that particle system. And if not, we just leave has particle system as false. But if we have a particle system, then we set it to true. And then we have here the public method play damage effects. This is the one that is hooked up to the undo damage event that you saw earlier. And here, if we don't have a particle system, we just skip out of the method. But if we do have a particle system, then we set the position for the particle system and the rotation to the origin that we have selected here before. So this is going to be the edge of the axe, for example, at the moment of making contact with the collider. And it's important that we don't move it later so that the particles all spurt from the same origin instead of moving around with the axe or with any other tool. And then once we have positioned the particle system, then we just play. And this is what actually sends out the particle. And that's it. That's a, a pretty straightforward system. Let's just see it in action one more time now that you know how it's built. So now let's try this with the hammer. You can see all the particles effect. You can see when I get hit, I also have these particle effects. <laughs> Lots of particles going <laughs> <hanging> around. <laughs> cool. That's a bunch of enemies. One thing that's cool to see is that the particle system is actually not affected by the enemy cooldown. So while I cannot keep making damage to the enemy, it will still generate the particles, which is a nice effect. And because we have the damage display separately, we can still tell the player very clearly when they're making damage to the enemy while still keeping the nice visual effects very responsive. But that will be it for today. This basically completes the feature set that we wanted for the melee combat here with the enemy. We have all the animation set up. We have the visual effects, we have the sound effects, we have uh, all the AI and the navigation set up. So that should give us a pretty robust enemy set. There are a few more visual and sound effects that we want to cover, particularly around the build system to make it a little bit more responsive and interesting. Also, we want more visual effects for the spawning system so that it's also more interesting to look at. But other than that, we should be getting pretty close to done with the game systems and we should be moving on to more content creation and basically just completing the experience so that it becomes one coherent experience throughout. In any case, we'll be looking at a few more uh, visual effects in the next video. So I hope that you're looking forward to that. But that will be for today. Thank you for sticking around with me till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.